Okay, we're back for the two o'clock block. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. We're talking about restaurants now. Restaurants Hawaii uh, with Cheryl uh, Matsuoko. She's a Hawaii Restaurant Association, and she has brought a friend with her. That's Chris Yankowski, and uh, he is with Triple. What is it? T Triple F. Triple F. Yeah, Triple F. Okay, which is a restaurant supply, hotel and restaurant supply company. So Cheryl, can you uh, take the moment on behalf of Hawaii Restaurant Association and introduce Chris? Yes, Chris Jankowski is the president of Triple F Hawaii. And Triple F Hawaii is a huge supplier, not only to restaurants, but to hotels, to the Department of Education. You know, all those school lunches, um, Jay? All those yes. trays, all those, yeah, all the forks and the napkins, that all uh, is supplied through Chris. And just like Chris, a lot of our suppliers, the reason for today's conversation is a lot of our suppliers, because restaurants and hotels are not at full capacity and some hotels not even open, right? Our suppliers are also hurting. So it's kind of that trickle down effect that we talked about, Jay where it's not only restaurants, you know, we, we keep our suppliers and our vendors very close to us. They are in this, you know, in this business together with us. So when restaurants aren't opening up at full capacity, then our suppliers are not supplying at full capacity. Our vendors are not, you know, pr producing at full capacity. So that's the whole conversation today. And Chris is a very, very good ally of the Hawaii Restaurant Association. So I thought he could share the story of how the, the suppliers are being affected during this pandemic. Yeah, thanks for coming on the show, Chris. So mm -hmm. what, tell, tell us about your relationship to restaurants and hotels, your relationship uh, for that matter to, to the Hawaii Restaurant Association. Sure, sure. Well, we're a member of the Hawaii Restaurant Association. Uh, I'm also involved with Cheryl on the Hawaii Restaurant Association Education Foundation. Uh, so we kind of work together a lot on that end as well to try to help, uh, you know, young chefs, uh, mentor them to, to stay here in Hawaii and, and go on in the industry. But we, we basically supply, Jay, any, any hotel, restaurant, uh, mom and pop uh, shop, you know, the cafes, the bars, the grills. Uh, all of those folks are our customers, the shave ice folks, the food trucks, anybody who's really buying a disposable uh, paper good, such as a clamshell or a straw or a plastic cup or a foam cup or any of those kind of uh, items, that's pretty much what we specialize in. And then we have this bar side where we provide everything in the bar but the booze. So from the glassware to the napkins, the straws, the, the, uh, the little mini umbrella that goes in your pina colada. That's kind of our, our niche as, as far as uh, we're concerned. And uh, we service all the islands. Uh, we've got locations and we're physical warehouses in Maui and Kona, Hilo and Kauai and here in Oahu uh, over in Pearl City. And uh, it, we have sales reps that in, interact uh, and kind of manage our, our customers' inventories as well. So they're out there on the street face-to-face, -face, you know, listening and seeing and suggesting uh, to our customers, uh, you know, what's going on and what the trends are and, and how we can help them. Hmm. Wow, you sound like the 800 pounder. <laughs> <laughs> My warehouse feels like it sometimes. <laughs> well, right now. <laughs> so if I, if I want to start or for that matter, operate a restaurant or a bar, um, uh, what are my options? I could either come to you or what? Go to Amazon? What can I do? I certainly could go to Amazon. You know, there's the Cisco's and Waihata's that are out there. Um, the Bar Greens, we're all sort of friendly competitors. I would say our niche compared to those folks is we do purely disposables. So no food products at all, nothing perishable. And that's kind of the biggest difference between us. You know, they don't like to, they like to put more protein on their trucks and we like to put more paper on ours. So <laughs> paper so, lasts longer. You know? huh? <laughs> shelf life. The shelf life right. is longer, Jay. <laughs> I've been on the other side of that for a long time in my career. So I'm kind of glad to be in the uh, disposables now. Yeah. A lot well, less so, about you know, you, uh, you talked about um, uh, how you, how you, watch their inventory. And I'm assuming you have a, a website uh, where they can order sort of like Amazon and uh, a package of things, a, a number of things that can keep them outfitted for a while 
Um, do, do, is your website, what is the name of your website, by the way? It's just triple F.com. Okay. So um, in that case, somebody can order whatever they need right on the website and you will deliver it at that point. Is that right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Most okay. of our customers tend to work uh, via fax or email or direct with our, our sales force. So a lot of, like I said, a lot of our folks are out there uh, in the field day to day, taking the orders and suggesting things that will help the customer. So we've, we have had to transition from, you know, kind of a food uh, supported distributor and to more of a COVID supply uh, house. I mean, we have sold container loads of gloves and masks and disinfectants, uh, anything COVID related, thermometers, which we never sold before. So that part of the supply chain for us has really shifted. Um, and we've done that to kind of stay, you know, healthy. Um, so that yeah, we saw, you know, a need for that. Of course, now I think it's getting a little bit saturated out there, um, but there's a huge uh, supply chain sort of gap with gloves right now. Nobody can get gloves. Gloves have went from $30 a case to $100 a case in oh. months. Um, and it's just, it's kind of ridiculous. But yeah, it's kind of like the Clorox wipes that you keep seeing on, on the news that they don't have the wipes to put in the bottles to, to ship out. It's that kind of thing in all of this COVID is, is, um, is huge right now. Cheryl, you're going to say something? Yes, it's supply and demand, Jay. As you know, right now, everybody is, right, class, the disposable gloves, the masks, the hand disinfectants, you know, right now, everybody's looking for it. So as they're looking for it, the price, the cost goes up, unfortunately. So this raises an interesting question, Chris. I mean, if there's a gap in the supply chain, take, for example, masks, they are so easy to produce. Mm -hmm. uh, you could get a bunch of people who maybe lost their jobs and some sewing machines and material and you could, man are you manufacturing anything like that? Are you a manufacturer also? No, we're not. Where do you get your stuff? You know, a lot of it comes from overseas, uh, anywhere, Vietnam, China, Cambodia. Uh, a lot of those PPE items come from overseas. Uh, so then you've got the, the delay in manufacturing over there right now because the supply is so huge. Um, there, there, it, it has gotten so crazy, Jay, that people are doing what they call proof of life. So there are suppliers asking you to stand in front of your, your product, hold up a newspaper for that day, almost like a ransom, right? To prove that you have that product on that day behind you. Yeah, that is so funny. <laughs> the funds that you can actually pay for what you want to get. And, yes. and, it's, and so what ends up happening is these transactions are so large they never end up happening because the supplier overseas says, you know what, we're only going to sell a million units of this. If you want to buy that, great. And you don't know if they're telling you the truth or not. And they don't know if you have the funds or not. And so all of these deals that are out there, you know, unless you've got like us, we've got suppliers who we've had for 30 or 40 years and we trust each other. Yeah. Everybody else who tried to kind of jump in this game, it is, is hamstrung right now because you, neither side's closing the deal. So it's it's really an interesting dynamic. Yeah, very challenging. I mean, sometimes, you know, for example, in the case of thermometers, just for example, um, if you haven't sold them before, then you have to establish a new relationship with whatever whoever the supplier is. And you may not have the Guan Chi with that supplier. So now you're going to have to learn to trust him and he's going to have to learn to trust you in a time when these things are in short supply. Yes. Yeah, we have, we've been lucky that a couple of our large suppliers on the paper goods side uh, who were importing already uh, had the links and, and contacts for those items. And we ended up bringing a lot of that in through them and we are, we trust them. They trust us. So that worked out to be a good partnership, but yeah, there, there are a lot of uh, problems in that, in that supply chain right now. So Cheryl, are, are restaurants in general having trouble ordering things? I mean, a, a part of this is, do they have the money to order things? But what are you hearing? What I'm hearing is, you know, when you do your inventory forecast and your cost forecast, you're gonna inventory, like you're looking at your food costs. Well, PPE, disinfectants, hence, we're not part of that, that 
original budget. So you didn't allow to have budgets for masks and gloves and all of the things that you need now. So what I'm hearing are the restaurants, number one, didn't have it in their budget. They have to get it by the Department of Health. They have to now have every employee in the restaurant, including the cooks, need to have a mask. And as you know, you know, you're going to go through a couple of those a day. Gloves, you're going to go through them, you know, throughout the day. So I'm finding that, yes, number one, right, they don't have the revenue because they don't have the dining room at full capacity. The revenue that they had set aside in their budget to buy food and to pay for everything else now is going to PPE. So it's you're between a rock and a hard place. You don't have the income, but yet you need to provide the PPE or you can't open. And as we talked about last time, the Department of Health, if they walk into a restaurant and they don't see the you know, hostess and the servers with masks on, they could give you a warning. The second time they walk in and you don't have that mask on, they're going to give you a red placard and shut you down. Ooh. Ooh. So, um, I, you know, I get conflicting thoughts about this, Chris. I mean, some, the guys who are still doing business, they need things they didn't need before. And right. that, and assuming you're carrying those things, that means more business for you. However, there's a lot of restaurants that A, have slowed down their volume, um, and B, have gone out of, or B, going out of business entirely. Uh, I read that Nobu's, yes. Nobu's shut down permanently. Ah, oh, one of my favorite places. <laughs> It hurts me in my heart. <laughs> so, you know, so which one prevails? I mean, some things you must be doing better. Other things you must be doing worse. And in general, you're probably suffering. Tell me how it works. Yeah, so a good example that Cheryl kind of talked about earlier, we you know we supply the DOE uh, with all their lunch containers. Well, when the, when school went on spring break and then kind of shut down, we had three containers on the water headed over here that, that, that took up a lot of space in our warehouse. Those, those uh, lunch trays are, are large cases. Um, so yeah, we're still setting on those. So there are a lot of items that, that basically just stopped selling completely. We shifted to a lot of the PPE items just to keep the cash flow going. Um, but a lot of the, the to-go containers have still kind of maintained. I think they've switched to a different type of of container or for us a different product mix a little bit and we have adapted like I said just to kind of keep the doors open um, you know we're hurting like everybody else is and uh, and it's you know the, the thing that's difficult right now Jay is you know we have buyers at all of our locations and it's tough for them to figure out what to buy because we used to keep 30 to 45 days on hand with worth of inventory and your customer here expects that because you can't run them out of a, a key ingredient you can't run you know, somebody like High Steakhouse, if you're a meat provider, you can't run them out of filet mignon. Um, and that's kind of what we run out, up against in, in the disposable as well. Um, you can't run these folks out of stuff. So um, buying has become very difficult. You can't make full loads anymore with certain vendors um, and you don't meet their minimums. So it's, it's definitely a challenge that, that just kind of trickles down uh, in all parts of your business. Yeah. Are you running out of stuff? <laughs> you know, what? We're, we are running out of a few things. Um, so certainly some of the PPE items, right? Uh, you know, when, when COVID really kicked in, the wipes, as, as I mentioned earlier, the Clorox wipes, and we have several different brands. Uh, they just went, you know, blank. Nobody could get wipes. Um, bleach went through that for a while where nobody could get bleach as well. Um, gloves have been sort of hand to mouth. We're getting gloves, but uh, we get them just about the same time that we run out of them. So um, again, it's been tricky. We've we've had to call on different suppliers to try to substitute those items just to keep our customers going. And and our sales staff, Jay, you know, they're out there telling the restaurants and the cafes and that here's what you need to do to reopen. Here's what you need to do to stay compliant. And so we really try to be a resource to them. We show them how to clean. Uh, we show them the different items and hand them, you know, flyers that, hey, when you open up, this is the, the five things that you need to have as PPE when you get started. So, um, you know, we're, we're trying to be that resource and, and it's, uh, you know, and everybody's struggling, like Cheryl said, they didn't plan on this in their budget to, uh, they have to buy these extra items that have since gone up in price. So, yeah, yeah I'm sure, you know, it's, uh, it's valuable, Cheryl, to be a resource uh, like Chris is. 
I'm sure the uh, Restaurant Association does the same thing. They come, they come to you with tears in their eyes and, and, and they tell you they're not sure they can make it next week. Yes. And uh, they say, give us some advice, give us some, at least console us, will you? <laughs> tell, tell us we're not alone in this. What do, you, what do you tell them? What do you do for them? We thankfully have members like Chris. I have stories, Jay, of small little restaurant, mom and pop. The, basically, they just, they can't even afford the signage or the PPE. Luckily, I have other restaurants that have a little extra. So we've been able to ask them for donations, ship it to the restaurant that, that needs the PPE and the signage, because signage is so critical today, Jay. People, you know, they're still trying to figure it out, right? And, and it's like, don't forget, wear your mask. Only when you're eating or drinking do you take your mask off when you're in the restaurant. Other than that, if you're standing up and you're walking to the restroom, you got to put your mask back on. Signage is so critical. Not everybody can afford it. So we're lucky and we're blessed that we've partnered with, we're a resource. So we've partnered with a few companies that will make the signs for them. I have other restaurants and people like Chris who will say, what do they need? A pack of gloves, some masks. They just give it to them. Yeah, very nice of you. So Chris, are you flying everything in? I mean, or, or do you have to wait on containers? Uh, it just, it strikes me that in, in these difficult times, when you have to um, you know, make deliveries uh, on a critical basis, you're probably going to have to fly things even when you might not otherwise do that. Am I right? You know, we can fly stuff in. We usually don't. Uh, most of the stuff does come in uh, over the, the shipping units. But uh, we've flown in a couple of, of uh, disinfectant type items when, when COVID first hit and there was an immediate need and people were scrambling. And, and we carried, you know, maybe, a, oh, I don't know, a, 10 day supply of a certain type cleaning item. And then all of a sudden, you know, they wiped us out. There's been a lot of that going on. Um, you can tell even some of our competitors will call us uh, and vice versa. If we see someone who has something that we might be out of, we may go over and, and try to purchase it from them. But uh, typically we try to stay away from, from air shipping just because of the cost. Um, Cause we have to pass that along as well. And, and, and we try not to do that to, to kind of make that, to keep the pricing structure kind of flat we try not to inflate it by doing you know air cargo yeah sure sure you know i, I want to talk about creativity <clears throat> and to, to start that conversation uh i want to tell you about um uh, hawaii building maintenance Hawaii building maintenance uh, has you know hundreds of employees downtown and they go and they you know clean up the offices after people are done well, a lot of offices are vacant, not, or if not vacant, inactive now. Right. And uh, so, you know, the question is how, you know, what, what can they do to remake their, their business? What can they do to follow the action? Uh, and, and just like you, uh, Chris, you know, bringing in thermometers and masks and gloves and all those PPE things, um, the uh, white building maintenance, they were on the show a few weeks ago. I was very oh. impressed. Um, <clears throat> they actually... Uh, clean the place, right. in, you know, in a in a, an anti-COVID way. I mean, they they really sanitize it. It's not just emptying the trash is what they customarily do, but they actually clean. I have a team that goes in and clean the place. And I and I wonder if this kind of thing is happening in the restaurant business, where you have a a, a team that comes in, whatever their iteration might be, and gives it a full tilt. COVID cleaning and or B acts as a certifier and say, you know, we have credibility and we are, we, we, this is, this is, this is clean and they're following all the rules and, and uh, the public can feel confident and the public can come in and, and, um, you know, um, and, th and that would encourage business obviously in the restaurant. So is this happening? Uh, and if not this, what is happening to, reimagine the industry because the industry have, and I'm sure you've noticed it every day is changing. Some restaurants are going out of business not to come back other restaurants, um, you know, are pretty creative. Uh, so how do you adapt yourself to that? I think the first part of your question, you know, in Hawaii uh, building maintenance is one of our customers as well, because we sell a lot of chemicals. So we do uh -huh. chemicals, toilet paper, paper towels, kind of everything that goes along with that side of the business as well. And you see a, a lot of folks like them who are doing that deep cleaning, they're coming in with foggers, 
um, or misters and disinfecting the entire operation, um, we're now selling those fodders where we didn't before. Um, but we've kind of, you know, shifted to sell that as well because we have customers asking for it. And I think what's happening, you, you see a few pop-up businesses that are, are trying to go into the restaurants and, and office buildings and say, hey, we'll come in for X number of dollars and disinfect your whole place or we'll do it every evening or what have you. And almost created this new uh, industry of sorts that's kind of popped up out of this whole COVID thing. Um, the problem is, is that a lot of the restaurants don't have the money to pay for that service. So they're wanting to do it themselves. And that's kind of where we come in and teach them, you know, what kind of disinfectants to use what kind of PPE to have and that kind of thing. Um, it's not really as difficult uh, as it might sound. I think it's just consistency. And I think our restaurants for the most part because of the placard system do a good job cleaning anyway. Um, but Cheryl, Cheryl might wanna talk about, we've seen the businesses shift from, you know, the in-room dining to takeout big time. And a lot of them are making more money on the takeout side. Right. And so I think, you know, what does the future look like? I think a lot of that looks, uh, you know, like it's it's going to shift to a more takeout only type business. And I think that's why we've seen some some smaller new new guys jump into the business because they didn't really want to do a full size restaurant and a full service restaurant. But the takeout was really what they were looking for. And this has played into that. So I'll let Cheryl kind of. Yeah, your investment in capital is less. Cheryl, talk about it. Yes. Yeah, so um, many restaurants, as Chris said, because the dining rooms were closed, all had to switch and redesign their menus so that they could do more takeout. Because as you know, Jay, some meals really don't travel well. They don't look appealing when they get to the other side. So number one, their whole takeout has revamped. Their whole menu selection and how it's gonna now travel well is revamped. Number two is freezing meals. So as you know, a lot of people freeze meals. So, you know, I'm just gonna mention like Zibby's, my, my daughter's favorite. We buy the chili and the, the, the little pack that's already sealed um, in the plastic bag. Well, many restaurants has now gone to sealing and freezing. So, and, and that's to think, Jay, if there's another pandemic or heaven forbid the volcano, it happens again. A lot of people didn't have meals. But if you pre-freeze them, you can send the frozen meals over. People just have to heat it up and they've got food. But if it's another revenue for the restaurants, right? So the other one is family packs, where if you're going to have, in the past, you had Mother's Day, Father's Day, we're coming up to Thanksgiving, you're going to see those family meal packs everywhere. I know restaurants that sold out on Mother's Day, like they had X amount of meal packs they were going to make. Well, you got to know, come Thanksgiving, a lot of people are going to be ordering those Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, Thanksgiving coming soon. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. So reimagine, redesigning, recreating restaurateurs. You know, to begin with, you know, we're creative people because we create meals, right? We take a piece of chicken and we make a beautiful feast out of it, right? We make a turkey and then we make a beautiful feast out of it, a whole meal around it. And it's all those little cranberries and stuffings and gravies and the breads and the desserts that you can really make an attractive family meal pack that'll feed four, six, eight. And that's going to be very popular come Thanksgiving. Well, you know, it's, it strikes me, Chris, that um, you're instrumental you talked before about the, the foam containers, uh, the disposables, if you will. Um, you can make a foam container that would turn my appetite off for a week, or you can make a foam container or some kind of container that would make me hungry, you know, 10 feet away. Uh, so have you changed your products? Have you, for example, have you put branding on some of these containers where it says, uh, I'm the bad example, but this is from Nobu's, Here's a picture of our, something that we offer, you know, some kind of particular uh, dish that we offer. And when I look at the picture on the phone, I said, wow, I want that. Um, I mean, I, are, you, are you tracking on that sort of thing in, in your offerings? Not right now, just because, I mean, that right now we're, we're uh, the supply chain is so strained. We're lucky to get what we get. Um, it's funny that Cheryl mentioned that because I had a meeting with our team this morning and we talked about getting ready for Thanksgiving. Um, you know, we've got to have the turkey boxes ready to go. 
And uh, we've got to be out there talking to our customers, seeing if they're going to do it this year or if they're not. There's another item that you could you could bring a bunch in and nobody does it and you get stuck with it. Um, or you don't bring enough in and everybody wants it in the last minute you're scrambling and then you might have to fly those in. Um, but yeah, no, no branding as such right now. But um, those, the microwavable containers, which are a plastic uh, black bottom, typically clear top, sometimes they're a clamshell, the number one item uh, that has spiked since COVID because nationwide, almost everybody is out. It's kind of, that's another hand to mouth kind of item that, that, that our suppliers keep running out of. Um, but the, the interesting thing about this, and that's a, it's a whole other segment for another day, is that you know next year in 2021, you're trying to outlaw a lot of these plastics and go to a biodegradable. Well, because it's plastic. Oh, right. Yeah. So right now, that is the number one item. And like Cheryl said, you just can't put anything in a certain container. You know, it, it, it doesn't look appealing. It doesn't ride well. It doesn't hold up. You can't reheat it. Um, and that's a lot of the things that, that ourselves and the restaurants have had to adjust to pretty pretty quickly. Well, what about the, uh, um, one of you mentioned the, the notion travel well, whether these containers travel well. And it, it seems to me if I get a container um, after say an Uber delivery, where all the food is sloshed to one side, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's kind no. of, a mishmash. That's that's not really exactly what I had in mind yes. when I when I made my order. And so, is there is there a way to deal with that? Is there a way to pack this stuff? And can you offer you know um, uh, paper goods that will allow uh, the restaurant to pack it in such a way so that when the Uber driver takes it out there, it's in decent shape? You bet. Uh, you know, from a from a small souffle cup that has a lid on it with your sauce in it. I, Cheryl kind of alluded to it earlier in that the restaurants have had to redesign their menus because not everything that they were making before uh, will travel well. And so a lot of them have maybe picked, you know, two or three items and then, and then kind of looked at it. How well does this plate in a, you know, in an eight inch microwavable container, what's it going to look like when it gets there? And I think they've thought they've taken a lot of consideration and thought that through. Um, and try to really keep the different liquids, if you will, uh, separate when they're traveling. So I think for the most part, uh, unless you got a bad one, Jay, most of them I think are doing a pretty decent job of trying to keep that in mind. <laughs> of course, you can never get a, a nice crunchy fry anywhere, right? <laughs> in my house, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Cheryl, where, you know, where is this all going? I mean, you know, what, what I, I, I keep thinking that these creative, you know, moves by restaurateurs uh, and 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 the restaurateurs that are opening new restaurants that are smaller, that's yes. sort of, um, it's going to change the industry. It's going to change the whole sector. I mean, people in Hawaii and maybe all around the world like restaurants now more than they ever did. Yes. You know, I mean, up till the end of 2019, um, we we the whole global population was spending more time, more money in restaurants, eating out more often uh, than ever, ever imaginable. Um, but the question is, how is that gonna change now coming out of COVID? What do you see as the, you know, the, the prevailing model or the, the model that has learned by COVID as we come out of it? As we come out of it, you're gonna definitely see a lot of more safety measures. You're gonna see more of the disinfecting, more of the um, hand sanitizers you're gonna definitely see changes in menus, right? Things that, like you say, like I said, travel well. Um, Jay, I know that a lot of people miss going to restaurants, including you, right? I do. And, yes, yes. Especially and so people are just- <laughs> and, and square barrels, remember <laughs> Thomas <Square> Bay. <laughs> And so people are going to go back and they're going to remember, you know, how it was when you go there with your friends and your family and have a celebration, right? It's nothing like going to a restaurant and having a celebration. Um, people miss it. I'm just going to ask the public to support restaurants. If you have a birthday gift or an anniversary gift or a thank you gift, buy a restaurant gift card because that's going to help oh, them. That's a good idea. That's going to help the restaurant immensely at Christmas. When you're right, buying that, you know, Christmas gift for someone, consider a restaurant gift card because the restaurants really need your support. If the restaurants are strong, suppliers like Chris will be strong. You know, yeah. the, the 
we we supply, you know, we work with our suppliers like our triple Fs, like our vendors, like the air conditioning guy or the guy who cleans the grease trap. All those people are depending on the restaurant survival. You and know, yeah, you know, Cheryl, the Hawaii Restaurant Association could really step in on that. You could offer a restaurant card that it can be used at multiple restaurants. Yeah. So I wouldn't have to worry if my particular favorite went out of business. Yes. I always know that I could go to another one, right? Yes, yes, yes. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have that risk. So um, Chris, for you, um, one question is, you know, all of this has to be um, very challenging for you to try to chase a, a moving target, a moving market, uh, where you don't know where it's going to wind up. You don't know what the governor is going to do on a given day. You don't know what the COVID numbers are going to, you know, and the political reaction to that. My God, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't have to ask you what, what you think about it at three o'clock in the morning. I already know. But, okay. the, but the question, <laughs> the question is, how, how are you changing? How is Triple F changing? What is it going to look like? Uh, how are your systems, how, how's your place in the market going to change as we come out of this? You know, I think, I think Cheryl sort of hit it on the head. First of all, the, the PPE stuff is not going away. Um, I think we will sort of step up our sort of chemical side of the business. I think it was a, it was a sort of our smaller portion of, 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 of our whole makeup. And I think we'll we'll continue to focus on that a little bit more because we definitely don't think it's going away. Um, cleaning and sanitization uh, has been brought to the forefront. It's here to stay. People need to know how to do it and how to do it safely without making themselves sick or, or, or getting burned with some type of a chemical or anything like that. So I think we got to put a lot more effort into the chemical side and the, and the education part of that. Um, and then, you know, I think we're just going to continue to adapt with the, the different types of, of containers that, that work uh, better for different customers. They're built, they're, they're constantly coming out with new uh, widgets, if you will, where you've got a built-in uh, dip portion area in your clamshell container, or you've got a fork that is uh, sort of uh, melded into the plastic container and you pull it off the top and then you eat your salad with it. So um, they're constantly innovating. And I think um, as this whole thing uh, goes along, I think, I think the takeout uh, is, is here to stay. I think it's going to grow. Um, people still love to go out to eat and I think they'll continue to do that. But I think the takeout is going to expand from here. Yeah. Okay, Carol, we're almost out of time. So take a minute and summarize what we learned today and how much of what Chris said you agree with. Huh? Oh, I agree with 100% of what Chris I knew you were going to say that. And you know me, Jay. <laughs> and, and the restaurants need the support so that we can support businesses like Chris and all of our vendor partners, because our vendor partners is part of our restaurant family. So please, you know, go out and like I, I mentioned, you know, purchase gift cards. Hawaii Restaurant Association is the voice of Hawaii's restaurants and food service industry. We're a resource. If anybody has any questions, please reach out to me and let us know how we can help. Thank you, Cheryl Matsuoka, Chris Jankowski. Thank you very much, you guys, for joining us. It's okay. been very educational, very helpful to talk to you. Um, and see you next time, Cheryl. Yes. Thanks very much, you guys. Thank you. Aloha.